All right, today for our short little how-to video clip, we're going to demonstrate changing out a single pole switch to a timer switch, and that runs the bathroom fan. Drives Sandy crazy when we leave the bathroom fan running all day. I would think it would make her more insane if we didn't turn the fan on, but however, she wants a timer switch on, so that's what we're going to do. Now the first step, as always, is safety first, so we're going to make sure we get the power shut off, and then we'll remove the faceplate. Okay, so we've got the breaker off. We've got some additional lighting in here so that we can see what we're doing. We'll now remove the faceplate so we can get at the appropriate switch. Okay, so we've removed all the screws. Now we've got the box open. And just to be sure, we're going to check for power in this circuit. Always safety first. So we'll get the meter out. Turn it to AC volts, and we'll get in here on a hot conductor and test for power. Okay, so as you can see, I've got one meter lead on ground, which is just the, the mounting screw of the GFI receptacle, and I've got one terminal lead on the hot screw terminal of one of the switches that I know was hot before, and as you can see, I'm reading zero volts. And I can check both sides. And again, zero volts. So I know the power is off. Now we can remove the switch, which is the third switch. This switch here is for the main light in the bathroom. This one's for the light above the shower stall. This one's for the fan. So this is obviously the one I want to switch out to a timer switch. So now I'll remove all the devices that I need to. Hopefully I can just remove the one switch we need to and I'll get enough wire length to pull the, the switch out and change it to a timer. Okay, now we're removing the device screws. Here's another little handy tip that will save you some money and some frustration and aggravation. And as you can see, these switches were painted in place. So before I go pulling that switch off the wall, I want to just score the paint around the mounting tabs. Because if you don't do that, when you go pull that switch off, sometimes you can tear a whole slab of paint off and then you're faced with some patching and repainting. So if I just score that, just so that when I pry the switch away, it doesn't break the paint. Okay, so I'll finish removing the switch and then we can look at what we got for wiring in here and see that our timer switch is going to work. Okay, I've pulled out the switch that operates a fan and as you can see behind here this box has been used for a lot of splices. So we've got a lot of hot wires, we've got neutral wires in the splice and we don't have a whole lot of room behind where this new timer switch has to go. And it's fairly deep so I'm going to have to pull out these other two switches, kind of rearrange the splices and I also will have to get at the neutral splice because this timer switch requires a neutral connection. So I'm going to have to remove the other two switches. Okay, so I've pulled the wires out of the box. I need access to this neutral connection because the new timing switch has a neutral wire. It has a ground wire, so I'm going to have to get onto the ground screws at the back of the box. And then I've got my hot black wire that's going to have to get into this splice, which is my hot splice, and you can see it's pigtailed to each one side of each of these switches. And then my blue wire is going to be the switch leg out to the fan. So I have to get at these splices and make my connections. So now I've opened the box up, I can make my connections here. Okay, so first things first, as usual, you want to connect your ground wire. So I've got my ground wire connected back in there to one of the empty ground screws, if you can see in there. Next, I've opened up my neutral connection, taken off the moret. And it can be kind of tricky adding in another wire into a splice, especially a stranded wire. But if you get it lined up straight and twisted together with the group as best you can, and get that moret threading on.
if the barrette tightens down evenly and snugly, you know you've got a good connection. And I always like to just tweak them down a little bit with a plier so it's nice and tight. And then do the tug test. Pulling on that white wire, I've got a good connection into the neutral splice. All right, so this is the switch that was for the bath fan. I've pulled the hot wire out of the hot pigtail splice. And obviously then this wire is the one that goes to the fan. So I need to remove that one off the switch. The old pigtail has to be replaced with the hot wire that goes into the new timer switch. So that's got to get tied into that splice. And then the blue wire from the timer switch will get spliced right to the wire going to the fan. And I know that because I looked at the directions on the timer switch and it explained exactly how to hook it up. So next I'll tie in my hot wire to the hot splice and then my switch leg out to the fan. Okay, I've got my final two connections made. The hot black wire is into the hot pigtail splice with the rest of the hots. And then the switch leg blue wire out of the timer switch is going to the single black conductor that's heads up to the, the bath fan. Now I'm ready to try to rearrange these splices so I can make room and get this, all these switches back in place inside the box. All right, I've tucked the splices back as best I can into the box. You want to be careful there's no pinch points. Nothing's going to get pressure or stress on it when you put the devices back in. I've got more room in behind these single pull switches than I do in, in behind our new timer. So I've kind of moved the splices over to this side of the box. And now, test fitting. My timer will fit into place without, any, without having to push on it. Okay, so now I can remount the devices and put the plate back on and test it out. Now also with this particular timing device, these extra tabs on the side of the of the device, you have to break those off for a multi-gang installation or else your cover plate won't fit right. So as you can see, they're scored. Just have to bend them back and forth a couple times and they break off. And just finishing up the last of the box mounting or the device mounting screws. Line up the switches as neat as you can and at about the same position on each hole so that when you put back your plate, especially in a four gang box, you can have trouble lining up all the devices. So a little test fit here shows that I've got to move some things around a little bit. And you can do that just with a screwdriver. If they're not too tight, you can slide them over a little bit. I'll try that. Don't want to force it or these plates will break. Still something not quite right. All right, move the devices around a little bit. One more test fit. My plate now fits. Okay, I can put all the box screws in or sorry, the plate screws. And not a minute too soon, because it's very, very hot in here. Line them up nice. And I'll finish putting in the, uh, the plate screws, and then we'll turn the power back on and test our new switch. Okay, I've got all the plate screws back in, lined them up all vertically. Went downstairs and turned the breaker back on, so everything works. Now we can test our new fan switch. As you can see, pre-selected buttons to push for 10, 20, 30, and 60 minutes. So now when you want the bath fan on, push it for 20 minutes, and it'll run until it times out. Installation's complete.